All right, guys, quick note, just so that you are aware. Remember, anytime you watch one of these video lectures, if I go too fast, you should pause it to get down the notes that you need because you should be taking notes. Um, or you can just go directly into the lecture slides and pull them from there if that's more beneficial to you. Okay, so yesterday in class, we started talking about campaigning and campaign finance. Um, we talked about where money is spent. We talked about where money goes. Um, we talked about the FEC's specific rules and regulations regarding that. Um, in our campaign finance folder <clears throat> that I have in Schoology, it does have the direct hyperlink to the FEC's website if you wanted to look at it a little bit more, but you can also just Google it to find it that way. Okay, today we're going to look at the Bipartisan Campaign Finance Reform Act, as well as Citizens United versus FEC Supreme Court case, which was in part a result of this act. Okay, so it's called the Bipartisan Act. Um, because Senator McCain and Senator Feingold were of different parties, McCain Republican, Feingold Democrat, but they worked together because they thought it was really important um, to adjust the way that campaign finance worked and the role that money was playing in elections. Okay. Um, I very much generalized what it does. These are some four big things that it does. Feel free to look up more about it if you're interested. Um, but it banned soft money contributions to national parties. Um, remember, soft money is anything that's not being given directly to a candidate for their campaign. Um, so it gave it to the parties for the parties to do other things with. Um, obviously, if the parties could support non-campaign related things with that soft money, then they could spend other money to support campaigns. Okay. Um, however, it did also increase the specific limits for hard money donations. Those are monies that are given directly to the candidate for the campaign. Um, it limited how much one individual could donate in, an, in a campaign cycle. So total between however many candidates it is that they choose to donate, they can only donate a total of X amount of dollars. All of that has to be recorded, um, right, for a paper trail. The big thing, though, that it did was that it banned organizations um, for paying for electioneering communication 60 days before the general election or 30 days before primary election. In essence, it was talking about advertising, right? And again, organizations spend money that they're not necessarily giving to a candidate. That's also soft money. It's an independent expenditure. It's money that I spend to support a candidate, but I don't give it to the candidate. Okay, so what this act did was said that that spending by those outside organizations had to stop a period before the election, okay? This portion of the Bipartisan Campaign Finance Reform Act is what most led um, to the Citizens United versus FEC um, issue. The problem was that Citizens United violated that portion of the law, um, and then they brought the suit to the Supreme Court arguing that that portion was unconstitutional. So what I want you to do is I want you to read about Citizens United um, in the Launchpad, which is our online textbook. If you don't want to go into the online textbook and you checked out this little tiny textbook, it is also in here. Just look in the table of contents and you'll find it. Um, however, in the online textbook, I have officially assigned it to you um, so that you could easily access it within the online platform once you log into Launchpad through Clever. It's the same place you go for your learning curve. Okay, once you're done doing the reading, and working through the guided reading questions that are also embedded within Schoology. Um, you might need a little bit more support. I would suggest that you watch either Heimler's video on Citizens United or the Bill of Rights Institute homework help video on Citizens United. I will have attached them. They're both attached in um, this section right underneath. So you really only need to watch one of them, but if you really feel like you need to get a better understanding because you're so confused, totally your choice to decide if you want to watch both of them, okay? Please do make sure that when you are finished um, that you submit those guided reading questions on this court case um, by 11.59 um, today, October the 9th, if that's when you're actually watching it. But if you're watching it earlier than that, just make sure you get it submitted um, before the end of the day. Um, that participation is how I'm going to check attendance for October the 9th, all right? With that, um, I am going to be on my computer. So if you have any questions as you progress through this, feel free to send me an email or you can swing into office hours between 10 and 11 20 a.m. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow.